for, I think, longer than most. I think about 20 years. Is that, is that right, Mary? Yeah, and um, it's a... And then what I, I like about the Bayview is that uh, there's a certain freedom, um, uncensored freedom, of expression as long as it's revolutionary, as Willie says. <laughs> so I had to, you know, sort of make sure that, and what I believe is revolutionary is, is art and politics that have a concrete uh, manifestation in the community. So we're not just writing, we're not just um, uh, philosophizing or presenting a particular perspective without some kind of action connected to it that is liberating and for the people. And I, I don't remember how I, I, I met Mary Willie, um, but I do remember when I was working on my master's degree, um, I found out that Willie was from Black Town. And, uh, and I interviewed him for my master's, one of my, my first class on, on um, oral history. And, and we talked about, about his, um, the founder of that town. And, and that, you know, and the black people that came from Africa and had African ways in Texas. And, uh, and it was just really, really um, wonderful. But what I, what, the reason why I ended up uh, sort of stop writing for all the other papers, because I was looking for a place where I could have guaranteed publishing. I said, well, if I write it, will you run it? And so when I was writing for the San Francisco Sun Reporter, it was, well, we have space, we'll run it. And when I was writing for the Oakland Post at that time, um, under Miss Berkeley, it was like, well, if we have time, we'll run it. But Mary said, if you write it, we'll run it. And so, <laughs> and I don't know how many of you all are writers, but it takes a lot of work covering things. And you don't want to just like go put it in a drawer. It's not vanity writing. You want to have an audience. So it's been really, really great. Um, and uh, in lieu of financial, um, of, I mean, we used to get paid, and I haven't got paid for a while, but, but we, we get these great titles. So I'm like, arts editor, doesn't that sound fabulous? <laughs> and, and, and Willie and, Ra and, and Mary are, are like family. You know, they publish out of their kitchen. Um, you know, their dining room is where they lay out the paper. It's just, you know, 24-7, that's their life. And, you know, you can't help but sort of be pulled into a movement like this. San Francisco Baby is actually a movement. And, and I'm really, really happy to be here. The last question that I'm going to ask before we turn it over to the floor. Me, I've been writing for the paper for about 16 years. And I've learned so much from artists that we've had in the paper, but also from campaigns. We've covered Haiti, we've covered the Congo, we've covered Rwanda constantly, we cover homelessness, we cover police terrorism, we cover political prisoners, we cover prisoner issues, and these are just some of the regular beats. But then we also cover local artists and national and international artists. For all of the panelists, what do you think the most important aspect of the Bayview is for you in your constituency. Let's start with David. I was just thinking, you know, one of the things that I think we may not fully appreciate is that the Bayview has been kind of like a, a historic document for us. Meaning that uh, you were talking about the artists, you know, over the years, um, you in particular, JR, have interviewed a lot of artists, and it's one thing to do the interview, but it's another thing just to have the transcript so you can actually see what they say. And when you think about that, start Googling and look at you know, different artists, especially once they get to, if they're in the B and C level, meaning that they're local. They may not be on MTV or BET, but nevertheless, they, they have impact in their community. They're, they're superstars and well-known. Those stories are priceless. Some of those artists may not even be around anymore. You know, and you have their actual words, and I think that's something that you can come to appreciate, especially if you're talking about 16 years, you can go back and look and be like, oh yeah, you got Jay Stalin, and you got this one, and you got Mac Dre, and you got, you know, different people that you don't really have a, a whole lot of places that you can get just that transcript. So I think that's an important thing. 
And then I would also underscore the campaigns have been good, uh, especially around police violence. I think the Bayview and you all have been very successful in actually changing the way in which we even approach it. It's not police brutality, all of us say police terror now, right? We're very much more straightforward about uh, uh, how we look at that, that sort of, these sorts of incidents that take place. We also know the breadth of uh, uh, voices that speak to that issue. You know, it, it was kind of narrow for a long time. Now we kind of know that there are folks on the ground. There are still elders out there, former Panthers and black liberation fighters that are just as much a part of the fight as they are today. We also know the extent. If you think about, say, for example, the coverage around the SFA, you start Googling that, you don't see it in the mainstream papers. So that was kept alive through the Bayview. So I think those are the types of historic documents that, you know, if you start doing some research, you're in school or something, that's going to pop up and that's going to be an open door for us to really explore. And because it's not a compromised institution, we'll really get some raw data and raw uh, information to build on. And I'll also just say one last thing. I work for a number of uh, media outlets, KML, KPFA, um, BAM Magazine, a whole bunch of magazines. It's the Bayview that was the one that actually got me my press pass, my accredited press pass. So, you know, out of all those papers, you know, this is the one that I got that I still have.